Something strange was happening. Something new was happening. Tongues of fire touching people, people ducking everywhere trying not to burst into flames. Surely, it was just the beginning of a mass incident of spontaneous combustion. I bet that's what people were thinking. It must have been terrifying. And it must have taken a hot minute <laughs> for people to realize that no one was going to burst into flames. I mean, that's what you would have expected, but th that's not what happened. Nobody was set on fire, but every heart was set ablaze. This was the moment that all the stuff that was holding them back, the fear, the doubt, the uncertainty, the lack of vision, it all disappeared. The fear, the doubt, the uncertainty, the lack of vision, that's what was consumed by the flames. And it was out of the chaos and confusion of the flames and the wind and the seemingly drunken gathering that the church was born. Something shifted. Something changed. Something new was happening. The followers of Jesus, they stopped going to gatherings to talk about what they should do next, and they quit making their to-do lists and their action plans, and they just went out and they started telling people the good news about Jesus. They spoke clearly and with conviction, and they did everything Jesus told them to do, like healing the sick and feeding the hungry, caring for the needy, working for justice, and forgiving one another. It was hard-fought community, but it was worth the work. They remembered that day when everyone could understand everyone else. Even people who didn't look like each other, even people who didn't speak the same language. And because they had seen what could happen when the Holy Spirit worked her magic, they knew that no matter how difficult a person was, no matter how different a person was, no matter how defiantly divisive a person was, that there was always a way, always a way to understand and be understood. The people were filled with the Holy Spirit, free and open, loving and honest, focused on the kingdom that Jesus spoke about. It was like they were actually building the kingdom, person by person, act by act, word by word. They were filled to the brim with the Holy Spirit, and because of that, they thought less and less about what had been, and more and more about what would be, what could be. They cared less and less about what others thought, and more and more about how much they could love. These spirit-filled early Christians were quick learners, and they learned right quick on that day of Pentecost that the Holy Spirit doesn't give a fig about your plans. She doesn't care one smidgen about your to-do list, or your order of the day, or your five-year plan. She comes at the most unexpected times and puts the power of God in the most unexpected people, turning ordinary women and men into instruments of God's power and mediators of God's grace. Today, something strange is happening. Something new is happening. Something has shifted. Something has changed. The church is not what it used to be nor is it what it will become. But we must change. We must be better. The Spirit is still moving. It is blowing and burning away our fear, our doubt, our uncertainty. It was out of chaos and confusion and into a hostile world that the church was first born. And it is out of chaos and confusion and into a hostile world that the church will be reborn. Something new is happening. And the Holy Spirit, while well, she continues to burn in us and through us and around us every step of the way. <laughs>